Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today, we've got a Gemini 18 inch subwoofer. This subwoofer, we're gonna put it through the whole paces here of talking about the five big points that I look at when I'm buying a sub for the showroom here. And these are probably gonna line up with some of the values that you're looking for in a subwoofer. So if you're looking for something for home, for your rec room, for your basement, for your workshop, for, well, work itself, uh, I'm not exactly gonna put this in the category of stuff to buy as a DJ. Uh, normally I'd want something a little bit more powerful and rugged for that. Uh, but definitely if you're going to bring something home and you want to have something that pounds, you're probably going to want to watch this video because we're going to talk about differences between just having a top, having a top with a subwoofer. Uh, remember not to confuse. A lot of times you look at, you know, the main speaker and you go, it's got lots of power. It's got lots of volume. Uh, power and volume don't necessarily always add up to bass because a lot of times we're hoping that's what we're gonna buy when we buy our top. So we're gonna have that big bottom end. Those are two separate things. So today we're gonna talk about that and we're also gonna talk about this Gemini ZRX 18P and everything you get when you buy one of these and the big value of buying a Gemini subwoofer versus some of the others. So we're gonna look at five points that I look for in a subwoofer when I'm looking to bring something into the showroom for my customers. Uh, the first one is going to be power. Does it have enough power to keep itself going? Second is gonna be bass response. How well is the bass and how well does it carry? Um, amazingly enough, power doesn't always you know, equate to low end, good quality bass. Uh, third is going to be build quality. How well is the actual unit built? Uh, number four is going to be uh, ease of use. How easy is it to operate? Uh, how involved do I have to be on the tech side to make this thing work? Uh, a lot of subs are straightforward and there are a lot of subs that are not. Uh, and then the fifth one is price. Does it fit in the price category that I'm looking for and that the product should be sold at? Uh, that's really important. This speaker met all those criteria. That's why it's here. That's why it's in our showroom. And that's why we're going to talk about it today. So the first thing I look for is power in a subwoofer. So when we look at the back of the unit here, we do see the amp plate and well, it's an amp plate. And this one here, 1600 watts RMS is what they last had it rated on their website, which is about 800 watts RMS. So that's tons of power to drive the 18 inch. With the 18 inch, we're really gonna look at part number two, which is how much bass do we get out of it. This unit here with the amp plate, we have a selector on the back, which allows us to have variable gain. We'll pull this off for a second. So when we're looking at managing all that power going into the actual sub, uh, it has a built-in crossover system. So this way it's a DSP digital sound processor and it can manage it from a live monitor DJ mode. That's kind of what they labeled it for. But basically it's gonna give different frequency cutoff points. Uh, I like my bass tight, so I tend to leave it on live. If you own an actual ZRX, uh, either 15 or 18 inch, let me know down below which one you like to play it in. I do like my bass, like I said, tight and controlled, so I do leave it in the live, which seems to be the lowest frequency that it cuts at. Outside of that, power-wise, it's going to keep driving. I haven't had this unit shut down. I've never had the fan wailing on the back of the unit. I've never actually heard the fan, so that's a good thing. Uh, outside of that, again, when it comes to the amp plate and the power, pretty straightforward. It is in its own closed basket, so it's separated from the rest of the unit. And that's really important because we're not gonna get all that pressure from the driver pounding against or pushing, trying to squeeze some air out through all these little vents, which I think is kind of odd, but they do put a full basket inside uh, to separate this from the rest of the box. So that's a good thing. So build quality is really important in a subwoofer. So we do wanna see a box that's either made out of plywood or MDF. Now there are advantages to having both. In this case, this is made out of MDF. So it has the density. We're not gonna get any vibrations out of the box. Uh, it allows them to get this 18 inch driving really well and keeping itself together without vibrating, which is a huge thing because if you're using it in a rec room or if you have it at work and it's playing in the background, you don't wanna have any loose rattly sounds coming off of the box itself. So. That's very, very secured. It is double walled, and we're gonna take the cover off here in a second so we can get a closer look at it. But it's got a pole mount on top. So what we'll notice on the side, on both sides, of course, we've got handles. 
routed right into the actual box. There's uh, a secondary box, of course, inside of it, which also adds to the reinforcement of the whole unit. There's cross frame inside of there, again, holding the side walls together and keeping the whole box solid. Uh, when we look at the finish on the outside of the box, we are looking at a powder coated uh, black textured finish with that glossy little shimmer on top of it, which is kind of like for wearing down, that sort of thing. Again, uh, this box here is heavy. So this box is heavy. It does have some weight to it. It's pushing like close to 90 pounds. So you're not gonna wanna move it around a lot. It does have rubber feet at the bottom so it stays planted firmly on the ground where you're gonna put it. Uh, if you do have carpet like me or maybe a hardwood floor, you can get pucks for the bottom of it so you can do that with it and slide around. It's a lot easier. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll take a minute, we'll take the cover off, we'll take a closer look behind it. And that being said, let's talk about the cover. It is a heavy gauge solid, slightly curved, so this way we're not gonna get a lot of flex out of it, and that means we're not gonna get a lot of vibration out of it. It also has a diffusion mat behind it, which is to help get the sound through the cover without hitting the cover so hard that it causes vibration. Uh, it's called a effect, where the actual driver starts to make the whole cover make its own vibration, its own sound. So the diffusion in the behind it is to cut that out. So that's nice to see that they actually took the time and the extra money to put that in there. Uh, it may sound silly, but there are companies out there who don't bother. So in this case, we have it, it's good. So altogether, there's 14 screws that have this hole secured. And now we're going to slowly take the cover off and reveal the driver behind it. So again, here's that diffusing mat. Now, pretty straightforward. It's just attached to that unit. It's not going to come off. You don't have to worry about it. Remember, there were screws down the side and across the front. So here we go. This is the 18-inch subwoofer. Uh, now. It's just got two large ripples off to the side of it, and then we can come down to the actual driver. Beyond, it's cardboard. It's the best way to have a subwoofer uh, perform the lowest frequencies possible and do a really good job. Uh, this is a dust cover. This could have been as small or as big as they wanted to. This is what's protecting the actual unit. Outside of that, and then we've got our two big ports at the bottom. Pretty straightforward. They added some sponge across the top and across the bottom, so this way not to have uh, any loose vibrations or sponge down the sides to secure it all together. Those are just little details that are good details. Outside of that, that pretty much covers it for the actual driver. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the back and then we'll try and place something on it. So here we are, back at the amp plate. Now, very straightforward, like I said before, we do have our 800 watts with our 1600 watts peak. Uh, when we come to connectors and options, we're gonna have two XLR inputs. We can either run to our tops first and down to our bottoms, or we can go to the subwoofer here, left and right if we choose. And then we can come out here as a pass through. So if we had to hook up more equipment that we didn't wanna have, uh, have any crossover points to it, we can do that here. And then on this side here, we have a high pass output. This means I don't want uh, anything less, anything uh, under 120 Hertz making it out of here. So this has got a crossover built into it to only let everything from 121 hertz and higher come off of here. In the center, we've got our main volume knob. And for us here, I never have to play this thing more than 75%. Usually it's sitting around 50 to 60. Uh, occasionally I just want to show off and turn it up a little bit more. And then we have our reverse phase option here. So if it's facing towards the rest of the speakers within line of everything, there you go. If you're going to spin it around, flip it this way, when it hits the back wall and comes off, it'll still be in phase with everything else. And the actual crossover built into it that we were talking about earlier, so you have your live, your monitor, and your DJ. Again, great for everything from a workshop to work itself, uh, for your home rec room, everywhere we've talked about. I don't put this, I hate using the word beginner DJ. There's no such thing as a beginner DJ subwoofer. There's only the right subwoofer for the job. 
So you really have to decide what's right for you and what customer base you're going for. So if you're actually a DJ and you're trying to decide on the right sub, first you have to decide who's your audience, who do you perform for? And then from that point, you can then choose a sub. Uh, this is more of a stationary, I wanna keep it in one place. I'm happiest selling this sub for those type of folks. So a lot of times I sell it to churches, it works out. I sell it to halls that have it fixed in place. Uh, uh, again, most of them are going to people's homes, homes or at their job site. Uh, they've got a warehouse they work at, they've got a mechanic shop, anything like that. Just be creative. People like to play their music loud, but they also want to have the big bass. This is what you need to finish off that whole project. So again, back on the back is pretty straightforward. You got your power switch, everything. So this really, when we're talking about ease of use, this is what we're talking about. Uh, you can get adapters if needed to accommodate. You can hook this up to a controller or to a mixer. Again, your choice, depending on the equipment you have. So not very complicated on the backside, does exactly what it needs to do. So just give a rundown just before we actually do the sound test. Uh, I'm gonna do my best here for you. Subs are always hard. I've got the Q2N from Zoom here, uh, which is gonna be picking up the driver itself. Uh, right off to the side here, we've got the Q4N again from Zoom. It's gonna be picking up from the side. Uh, we also have connected to the camera through a mixing board. We have a Marantz MPM 3000 condenser microphone connected there. Uh, I'm going to be turning off my lapel for the actual demonstration. Hooked up to the subwoofer today is an actual Gemini AS15P. Now, that's not necessary to be with this guy. It was just, I thought, you know what? It's Gemini, it's Gemini. Let's put them together, right? Uh, the AS15P uh, has a ridiculous internet wattage rating on it. Again, don't take that to heart. It says 2000. I'll be honest, I think it's more like 200 to 300 watts, thereabouts, RMS. But for the price and what you get out of it and how most people are going to be using it, it's an awesome speaker. Uh, having that connected through here uh, via an XLR cable, and I'm going to be using just a 3.5 to RCA to the back of that speaker. So that's what we're going to do today. Again, this is all our um, art list, royalty free. We subscribe to that, so it allows us to play all this music on YouTube, no problem. And if you're looking for these songs, you'll find them on art list. So there you go. Let's see what we can do if we can make this actually work and sound right. And again, let's see what we can do to get this entire recording to pick up the bass off of this guy. Now this is going to pick up the action and hopefully we can get the sound to transfer into the camera at the end of the day. So if you're watching this part of the video, it's because I could not get a good clean sound off of this subwoofer onto all the microphones that I have here. Um, so which means head down to your showroom, find out who's got one, go take a listen to it. Uh, the price will bring you to the store. You may decide to actually leave with one because of the performance. That's up to you. Now remember, for your home system, for your work, for your garage, that's what I'm talking about here crazy amount of bass. I don't necessarily want to be hauling this thing around uh, to do shows. I'd probably want to have something one step up from it. Uh, but if you're looking for home and you're looking for power and you're looking for bass, bottom end, low end, I want my music to sound awesome on the bottom end. There you go. But again, you're watching this because, well, the building shakes too much, too much vibration and it's distorting the music.
three, two, one. Okay, so I don't know if that worked out or not. Um, if it did, great. If it didn't, well, I did my best. So remember, subs are really hard to translate from here in the showroom to, well, your headphones or your phone or your tablet. So that's the hard part is to get it from here to there. Uh, at the same time, it's just a pickup thing. It's the cameras and the microphones are not always the happiest, even though that is a zoom and that is a zoom and the microphones are Marantz. Subs are just complicated, uh, especially to make it sound good because it's easy to make it sound bad or not hear it at all. Uh, trying to find that balance between the two, that's about it. Uh, we were hardly using it at all power wise. It does make everything in this building shake. Uh, so we get a lot of distortion and a lot of pickup uh, in that, that vibration and rattling of everything else. So that's pretty much it. I don't think there's a whole heck of a lot more to talk about. Yes, it's MDF. Yes, it's double wall. Yes, it's an 18 inch. It's built out of the right materials. It weighs just under 90 pounds. It has 800 watts of RMS power. Uh, I wouldn't go out and use it as a DJ, but I would use it for everything else, but that is for sure. Uh, if you like to have your furniture move when you're watching a movie, you can use it as a home theater sub. Uh, most of the time you're gonna be using it for parties. If you got parties at home, or you just like to personally have that room full of bass, that's the way to go. It also allows you to not have to turn it up so loud. Uh, so you can have the subwoofer and a top at a reasonable volume level, but still experience the way you want. So if you're looking for a top or you're looking for a lot of extra bass, uh, this is one of the pieces you may want to have a look at. So again, uh, if you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you've subscribed, I want to say thank you. If you haven't, now's a good time. And uh, we'll be seeing you on the next video. So remember, if you're looking for links for this, they're all down below. That includes our website. That also includes our Amazon affiliate pages in the U.S. and in Canada. See you next time. Bye for now.